y'all hear me? Hey, Welcome. Hello, Hello Kelly. Kelly. Oh, boy. Yes. I believe up here is amazing as a miracle. Because I am not a technological genius as you can. Thank you. Well, you're helping Thank us you. have confidence that Zoom is intuitive. Thank you. I do have my own personal IT specialist downstairs who suffers the rat if it doesn't work. It doesn't work for Woodward, but yeah. Nice. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning, Jesse. Good morning. Well, good morning to everyone. It is 8 o'clock, and I want to begin first by thanking you for being here in person online. Um, secondly, want to review our plan for this morning, and then also share um, what our plan will be starting tomorrow, and then moving into um, the next few weeks taking them a week at a time, but also understanding that this first push, as Dr. Gully said, will be for the next two weeks. So after, or once we begin remote school tomorrow, remote school will continue for at least two weeks. We have that assurance in this time of wondering um, what will be um, our reality after two weeks that's still to wonder um, but for now we do have that assurance that the next two weeks will be on this remote school plan you also have the assurance and this is a big change that starting tomorrow or even today as you saw from john's email is that we have the choice of working ourselves as faculty remotely from home or coming to campus so that is a change in expectation from when we last shared expectations, but I just want to be clear about that, that depending on your situation, just as for those today that are not with us, there's no judgment that they are not physically present, depending on their situation, both given their families, their own um, health, and um, their history, both of physical travel or um, physical situation, they have the choice to be at home um, or to be here. Okay. Um, is that clear with everyone? Make sure no questions about that. Jean Ann. If, if we should choose to come okay. here, of course. And because of my situation, I do think yes. that. Will there be security support? Yes. And things like that? Yes. Okay. Security support will continue. Um, administration, I'll speak for myself, will be here and there will be lunch served in a to-go, pick up, um, you know, your lunch and come back to either a teacher's lounge or your classroom, a place that would have a minimal number, number of people. Can I ask one question? This might be a stupid question to everybody, but how can you turn, how do you turn this up on this MacBook? The sound. The volume, Kelly, right next to the power button. The, the right the button. Yeah, right. Yeah. All right. So with our morning today, we have eight to nine together here. We might not need that much time. Um, just want to review the revised plan. Again, want to thank you for your patience as things have been fluid and what was announced um, a week ago is not what we're announcing today. Um, and that's just the um, these the sea that we're in, where we're going to ride those waves and respond accordingly. Um, 9 to 10, we will have Zoom training. Um, World Language, you're going to stay here, and Jesse's going to lead that. Again, depending on our numbers, we might collapse social studies. We'll just see how it goes if we want to bring more folks in here. But for now, World Language, you're in here with Jesse. English, you'll move to 132 um, with Elizabeth Burbridge. Okay. Um, so that'll be the next move from here. Again, if there are very few people in social studies, then we might bring them into here. We were wanting to respect no more than 50 gathered, which is why we broke out social studies. Then the second half of the morning, from 10 to 11.30 or however much time you need will be department planning. So our innovation team um, who represents every department will be taking the lead in instructions about PowerSchool. 
and being very specific about how we are posting so that students see that consistency across our PowerSchool pages. And then um, discussion about assessments um, and assignments, lesson planning. And then the afternoon, there will be a chance for lunch. Again, it will be a to-go situation. I haven't gotten confirmation if it's pick up a bag or if it's take the plastic clamshell tray that you already have or take a to-go box there, but we'll get those instructions. But lunch will be provided today. And then the afternoon is for you and your lesson planning. There's been a question, could I leave early this afternoon? The answer is yes. If you need to leave before 3.30, please do so. Um, with the understanding that by 9 a.m. tomorrow, what you need to post for tomorrow's classes, which is a day four, we're going to pick up from Friday, it's a day four tomorrow, um, will be posted by 9 a.m. And we're going to get into all of that in just a moment. So any questions about today's schedule? and the purpose of today. We want you leaving here today with all the materials that you need in case you decide to not return, um, as well as if students might need materials, meaning if you need to scan in some pages, if you're expecting a certain reading or, um, or a certain article, something like that that students might need that you thought they had because you've given them that packet already or they have that book already. Those materials might have been left here on Thursday considering that we left thinking we were coming back on Friday. So thank you for your consideration of students that might need materials. Some of them will come to campus today to collect those materials but we can't say you should have come to get them. We have to be understanding and provide them with those materials. So if you need to spend time today scanning into you know, our copy machines that scan and save as PDFs, thank you for using that time accordingly. Also feel free to be creative with taking photos of things and sending them from your home. I don't expect you to have a scanner from your home. All right. All right, let's move into our plan. Okay, beginning with our daily schedule. A week ago, we shared a hybrid synchronous asynchronous model, which we were excited about because we thought it, it just eliminates confusion and helps us stay on our schedule. That has now been abandoned for several reasons. One is the entire school, pre-K through 12, is now remote school. So many households might have three or four children on devices needing to remote school, and asking them to do that at specific times might not be reasonable. We aren't sure how all of our broadband Wi-Fi is going to support the streaming and um, connectivity. Also, many of our teachers are now working remotely. And to ask Jesse to not tend to his precious children from 8.30 to 9.15 does not seem humane um, if they need tending. Um, so we are now moving to a specific asynchronous model which means that we are still delivering instruction and responding to the needs of our students, but we're doing that in a way that looks like snow days, if that makes sense, when we remember how the snow days work. Okay, So the idea is that we will either work from home or come to our classrooms. The choice is ours. And then we are going to maintain our class rotation, but unfortunately not as printed in the planner until maybe April 1st. <laughs> it's going to take us a while to get to where we'll be on track with the planner. That's okay. We're going to put the planner aside um, and begin tomorrow is a day four, Wednesday a day five, Thursday a day six, and Friday a day seven. And then next week, we will begin with day one on Monday. Any questions about 
just the rotations in terms of which classes are meeting on which day. And I emphasize that point because you will only be posting and expecting assignments to be turned in or students to be responding to you on the days your class meets. So in essence, Rhonda, that, so in other words, if you post something in the morning for that class, is it still true to say that they want it completed within those 55 minutes? It depends on the assignment. Okay, okay. Depends on the assignment. So it does not have to be within the 55 okay. minutes of your class okay. meeting. Um, but if it is something that is a class activity okay. that you expect them to do during your allotted okay. class time, okay. that's fine. If it's a homework or an assignment that will take longer than your allotted class time, which we're going to get to that amount in a moment, then it'll be due the next time your class meets as we usually operate. Yeah, Kim. Where do we access that? Oh yes, this will be shared, this will be shared out with you today. Yes, thank you. It's available um, now. It's on there, you just go to your Google Drive and thank you. that title. Thank you, excellent, thank you for locating that there. Okay, Meredith. So asynchronous refers to between the schools. No, asynchronous meaning. What do you mean by asynchronous? I mean that we're not following a specific bell schedule the way we normally do. So your work on that day that you might assign for your classes does not have to happen at a specific time. It can happen at 11 p.m. Yep, let's get to that. Yep, let's get to that. Um, in just a moment, we'll certainly get to the availability part. The idea that you have to be available during the schedule of the 8.30 is no longer. Okay, that is no longer. And we'll talk about that availability in a moment, which will be hours that you set and communicate. Yeah, Ted. I, I know this is probably too late, but it is, was there any thought given to making three days of X days so that we jump onto day one on Friday? There was, there was, that was discussed. But we didn't want to overwhelm students with seven classes of work right out of the gate because they're already feeling that sense of, is this going to be like the snow day when all of a sudden I had more work than I ever had in a normal day? That was why we didn't go with that plan. But we did consider that. We did consider, let's scrap day four and start with day five tomorrow. But we did want to be fair to all classes having even amount of um, time. Okay, on to lesson planning and what we are expecting of you. Again, we have expectations for our students too that I'm going to share. So please know that all of the responsibilities and expectations are not only on our faculty. I already mentioned this, but just to reiterate, classes that meet on that day, so only five, right, each day, are going to be responsible for posting instruction assignments and then students will be responsible for that work on that day. I, yes, I did. No, actually I didn't hear it to you. Sorry. Okay, just a minute. <laughs> Forgive me all. <laughs> A function of Zoom, which we will learn later, is you can mute everyone that's in your room. And I'm sorry for muting you, friends, but the last. Oh, okay. Um, if you have a question, please um, chat it to us and we'll respond. So by 9 a.m. of that morning, so let's use tomorrow as an example. Tomorrow's a day four. Those of you that teach periods, someone help me, what periods will be tomorrow? Two, 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 three, four, five, Thank you. Two, three, four, five, six. We'll have your instruction, homework, any links students need to access, any PDFs of reading, etc., will be posted by 9 a.m. tomorrow. We'll look at the template that we're all going to use just to be clear with our students in a moment, um, but that must be posted by 9 a.m. 
with the idea that students as they rise will have what they need for those classes on that day. Again, asynchronous, they do not have to do that work in a certain order, at a certain time, okay, because again, we aren't sure of what's happening in their households, both with the internet or with other distractions, but that is their work for the day. Okay. Um, again, we're going to be creative in the way we are delivering that instruction, and we are going to give ourselves a few days to figure out variety and a, you know, what will be most effective, but we are going to have either content that we record, perhaps, okay. Screencastify has given us their pro version, which means that that device that Bob and Alex showed us last week in Richardson um, Theater, we can now record longer than 15 minutes. Um, if you wanted to use that device. So all of those tools we'll be playing with as we develop our content delivery um, for our students. Anything that you have recorded as a lecture or something that students have to watch, we are asking you to limit to 30 minutes. Okay. Just in the, in the respect of um, trying not to have our um, our students just staring at something and not interacting with an activity or with hearing our voices um, beyond just the lecture. Total class time, this is a change from what we shared a week ago, should not exceed 75 minutes. Okay, that is a change. Last week we said 60 minutes. Now going to this model, we respect that homework in classes you know, is usually around, again, just a, you know, around 30 minutes. Classes are 55 minutes, so that's even, right, more than 75. But we've extended it to 75 minutes. That is your bulk of time every day your class meets. You divide it the way you see best to teach what you need to teach and to ensure that students are engaging with that and then learning and showing you evidence of their learning. Okay. So there's some examples here, right? Um, and feel free to break it up the way that you see best. Okay, does that make sense? So let's say I want to queue up a writing assignment and I record a 10 minute video where I explain my expectations for that writing assignment and then students have 60 minutes in which to write to then upload their essay to turnitin.com. That would be a fair use of my 75 minutes. Or you might have six different um, assignments with different modes in your target language. That's fine too. You have a listening exercise, and then you have them record something where they're speaking, and then you have a written or um, all the different ways that you want to engage students with, um, with their language um, is excellent, too. Um, any questions about that 75 minutes and how that time should be allocated? In addition to the responsibility of posting your instruction as well as assignments, we do want to stay connected to our students and let them know that we are still touch points for them in this time. Hence the virtual office hours. So we're asking all of us to have two hours every day your class meets for students to connect. Okay. We're suggesting an hour in the morning and an hour in the afternoon, but we are not specifying English has 9 to 10, world language has 2 to 3. Okay. Again, you as the teacher will specify and publish those hours according to what works best for your schedule. Okay. Can I ask, um, make that like 
easy for, for students to understand everybody's different office hours. Can we just put it under the power school? Under yes, the there's a place for it. Yes, thank you for that idea. There's already a place that's been added in the template so that it's right there every day on the calendar. What, they might change every day, right? I'm not asking that they be the same time every day. Okay, maybe you have a doctor's appointment on Wednesday and you can't do nine to 10 and now you're going to do 11 to 12. That's fine. Just please put that on your template so students know that morning when they log on and see what's happening in French today, they see when Monsieur Stump is available, should they need him. When you're available, that means turning on your Zoom meeting room so that students can see your face, hear your voice. You can see theirs if they've enabled their camera. And you can handle both, maybe it's a group discussion depending on who logs in, or it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation depending who logs in. We had some discussion about this yesterday. When should you record those meeting conversations? And I would use that to your discretion. If a student logs in and says, I need help in, um, in this translation exercise, or I need help in these conjugations, and it's something you're doing that you think everyone would benefit from, feel free to record that instruction to post. Most of those virtual office hours I do not think would be recorded, right, as you're fielding questions or having um, these discussions. But if you think it would benefit everyone who didn't log on to see that, um, you know, correction of a paragraph posted, um, feel free to do that. Okay. Would, would it ever um, behoove students or any of us, do you think, Rhonda, if we <coughs> like, shared a class and we all joined the same meeting? Like, I'm just like, I'm like, Claire and I do 3EP, mm -hmm. or Tracy, Kristen, Hyann, and I do. I mean, if there's ever like a huge surge in like questions, like maybe in some of the CP mm -hmm. levels, like join forces and all do a meeting to. I think okay. that's a possibility and something to have in mind okay. that could be dynamic and um, efficient. Okay. Um, but let's see sort of how those okay. spaces yeah, yeah. converge and if, um, if it would work depending on scheduling of teachers. And, but that's, an, yeah, okay. keep that in mind as an option. Sure. Yeah, Chris. Just kind of a, it's a, I suppose a weird question, but it is, I did suggest when we were talking about it that you ask their permission, especially if it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation where you're working out something. <laughs> I say a problem, but we, we don't do that in, in our disciplines as much. But um, asking their permission, I think let's go with that. So then if they, if they deny it, um, let's, uh, let me put that on the list of things to be certain of before we move forward with any recording. Thank you for that um, that complication that could be right something we're looking into. Yes. Okay. And then finally, the understanding that if students miss your virtual office hours and they reach out to you by email, that you will still be responding to their emails. Again, in the same way that we say, if you can't come to campus and get your books, then you just can't read this novel. Um, if they didn't get on to the virtual office hour Zoom meeting room at that pre-appointed time, you will still engage with them. I'm not saying you'll engage with them on their time if they want to chat with you at 11 p.m., but you will respond to their email with a, could we talk tomorrow at 1030, or whenever's convenient for you and for that student. Okay, anything about the virtual office hours? Thank you for that. All right, assignments. Now, I know today in your department meetings you'll talk more about this. It pertains each subject. One thing that we're concerned about is clear communication on the calendar, on the PowerSchool calendar. 
So each day that your class meets, you're going to do a calendar post that says whatever your subject lesson. Um, so for me, I'm going to do four EP lesson and give them the template that has my Zoom meeting link, my office hours for the day, the objective of the lesson, what we're doing that day in class, and then the homework. If I have an essay due Friday, I'm going to create a separate event that's either an event or an assignment. Okay, and this depends on which you prefer. So an event would say, um, only goodness essay, that's the story we're reading right now, only goodness essay due Friday. And now their calendar Friday will say, that's due. Okay. Or if I choose to use PowerSchool as a way that I'm collecting assignments, then I would create an assignment, and again, your power school pros can talk through all of this in department meetings, but create an assignment that also shows up Friday on the calendar, but where students will upload their Google Docs. I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna do that sometimes, or turn it into turnitin.com sometimes, as we're still playing with it, but it's important that anything that is due is a separate event, so that that due date shows up on the calendar, as well as the lesson for the day shows up on that day of the calendar. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay, and not trying to make you do double the work, but for communicating to our students what's happening today and then what's due Friday, it's important that we break those out as two different events or assignments on PowerSchool. Can I get a, does that make sense to everyone? Okay. Thank you for that. And any specific questions about PowerSchool, feel free to ask after or with um, your PowerSchool Pro. Uh, Rhonda, I have a question. Question. Um, we, uh, I, I know two of my textbooks have a super site. I don't know if you're familiar with how that works. But yes. The super site itself allows students to turn in things via that website that's associated with the textbook. Yes. Um, I wouldn't be putting up a link per se to that because if the link is actually on their textbook and they're all very familiar with it, it's a five, the 5 HAB and I'm sure other teachers have books and the same things occurring. Um, I, I think it might be more confusing for us to put up something separate for that because they may be thinking, well, am I turning this in? Okay, Kelly, I would suggest why don't you work that out in your department meeting shortly because if students are already familiar with the due dates and that wasn't on the calendar anyway, right. then let's not Those create need, something new so that, that links don't need right. to be on right. Okay. right. Yeah, discuss that in your in your department to see which way you want to go. And I defer to um, Lori Beth and, and you and department members for what you need to do there. Okay, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I want to just remind everyone with the assignments that we are giving, this comes out of the homework task force work where the purpose of assignments, as with homework, we are reinforcing extending learning beyond the classroom <laughs> through either pre-learning, right, something that we need them to learn, read before they have the discussion, checking for their understanding of what they've read or, um, or learned, and then other enrichment. We are asking for three assignments per week to show that understanding, engagement, learning of our students. Now, to be clear, those assignments should be what you think is meaningful checks of learning and understanding. So they don't have to look like something that is every time written, or every time uploaded, or every time um, a discussion with the class. But as you're planning out your week, how are you sure that your students are engaging in remote school? Since we are not taking attendance and asking you to track that, the way that we are going to be sure is through these assignments. Okay. Now, there is a case 
this week, for example, I think period six only meets twice, or, or maybe if we would have been day five, period six would have only met twice. So if your class is only meeting twice this week, you don't have to assign three things. So please use your common sense in this. Um, and again, today in department meetings, you'll figure out more what are the assignments and what's the variety of them that we're going to hold our students to. If I have a paper due Friday, my three assignments might be, I want to see the introduction tomorrow, I want to see the second body um, by Thursday, and then the whole thing is due Friday. There's my three assignments. But again, feel free to use your creativity. An assignment might be a student doing something and taking a picture and uploading it. I mean, feel free to be creative with what does an assignment look like. But we are asking you to see three evidence, three pieces of evidence that for that school week, our students have um, taken your, your subject seriously. If they don't, here's the plan, okay? Here is the plan. It isn't here, but let me share it um, right now. Let me just go down to where that is. This is the monitoring. Okay, so day one, if the assignment is not met, okay, please email that student to let them know that you're checking, that you care that they're engaging with your material. If the student misses two consecutive assignments, please email the student and copy their parent and their grade counselor and that helps us to see the bigger picture right if the student isn't doing my work in English and isn't doing your work in Chinese then we see a bigger issue where the counselors are going to be calling parents and checking on that household so thank you so much for this record keeping, where I know we do this anyway, um, in terms of holding our students accountable for our work and we proactively communicate with parents when they don't. But thank you for this first week of giving that message to students that's very clear that if they are not doing our work, then we are um, holding them accountable for that. However you want to communicate, grade penalties again that's something to be determined in department um, today as well but this remote school is real school where grades can certainly be a part of how we are holding them to the learning and submitting their evidence of learning any questions about that okay thank you for that all right, just a few more things here. Again, the one that's probably our trickiest, and we might be in a holding pattern, or we might um, be just embracing formative assessments more, um, will be this assessment testing piece. So again, that's a part of the work this morning in department meetings. Um, we just ask that whatever I'm doing in 4EP, um, whatever you're doing, Scott, whatever Jenny's doing, the three of us teach the same course, that we're being consistent in that so that my class is not taking a lot of online tests that their classes aren't. Again, depending on if this goes two weeks or if this goes two months, we will then look at this idea that we formative assess now with the understanding that when everyone is back in this building, we are giving summative tests. I think we can operate with that idea this week and next week, with then maybe better clarity after this two week period to see if assessments just need to look very different so that students can still be doing those assessments and we can be giving them grades even if they aren't here. So again, um, I feel like this is a time when we are still, we aren't postponing life. We aren't postponing school. School's continuing. It looks different. Um, 
and our creative, wonderful minds are giving it that energy so that it is meaningful. I think right now, though, we can don't feel like, I've got to give a test this week. We can hold off this week of, of having to give a test, even next week. But understanding that if you find a creative way to give a test that you want to grade, or if you come to consensus on what that looks like, great, please proceed. Um, but assessments, I know, given our commitment to integrity um, of whatever that student work is, are going to be um, challenging right now um, to determine. Well, I just I had a thought about office hours. Yes. There are some English teachers who have free preparations. I'm sure some of the language teachers have many preparations as well. With office hours, should we relegate certain time periods for the certain courses? Yes. That was one idea that if you taught two preps only, you could very easily do morning office hours for one class and afternoon for another. Those that teach three and four with languages, um, if you want to group students into that, that's fine. Or if you want to leave it open, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, I'll just leave it again to departments to think through that. And then for you as the individual teacher to post whatever you end up deciding um, as long as that's posted so it's very clear either all of your students have access to you at this time in the morning and this time in the afternoon or this time is for this class okay. these classes yeah thank you thank you yeah um, i was thinking speaking of just maintaining the assignments um i was thinking of typing an email kind of like a raw letter to my students yes reminding them of Yes. Just their pledge to the Woodward Way of integrity and fairness. Not that this is going to solve, you know, all the temptation, but just reminding them that just like I, you know, every day we others is accountable for reasons beyond a grade yes. to maintain and exercise that type of character that that was going to be my first one of my students this week is just know that, you know, hey, I believe in you and you follow me on what's right, you know, just for the sake of, oh, I'm sorry, I'm kind of like narrating this. Yeah, perfect, so I, I perfect. Please send that email. Okay. And some of you who are uh, our advisors already saw this, but this document, which was to be shared with students on Friday, <laughs> and wasn't, will still be shared with students. And it affirms what LaQuinta has just said in that they are expected to log on to do their work according to the honor code, the acceptable use policy, and please hold them to that. If they show up to your classroom meeting without a shirt on, kick them out, right? <laughs> hold your standards. Um, Right? And if you do, I'm going to have a follow-up conversation with you. <laughs> so um, please know, and I appreciate you echoing that with your students. What are your standards, right? Um, can they show up with food, right? Would you let them do that in your classroom? No, but will you let them do that with remote school? Maybe, right? You set the, you set the norms and the rules. But we are expecting students to hold to their responsibilities. And a reminder from you, their class, their English teacher of that and what you expect of them is, is excellent. Good. Tad. No, it's getting warm in here. Sorry. Yes, OK. Yes, so we are not enforcing a dress code um, other than please um, have a shirt that is not revealing um, anything beyond, um, yeah, I mean, we, we aren't enforcing a dress code. No. Um, yeah. Ted, I would see if, if problems ensue, maybe we would need to, but right now we're holding our teachers as professionals that um, will show up in their classroom, meetings online, um, dressed appropriately. 
um, but not having to wear a shirt and tie, a coat, um, Pantyhose. <laughs> Leave it at that. Yes. Yes. Great question. Great question. Right. Okay. So let's just a reminder. And again, this is posted in the faculty folder as well. Here's the template. Again, please make a copy of this as your own Google Doc that you can then manipulate accordingly. This block for office hours has been added. Your Zoom meeting room link will be added. If you aren't sure what that is yet, you will soon. The next hour of our time together will create that link for you. Objective of your lesson, again, this does not have to be a full paragraph. Just, you know, why should I show up to class today? Sell it right there. The lesson. And the lesson could have bullet points, Roman numerals, however you decide to say we're doing this, we're doing this, we're doing that. And then an assignment, okay? Assignment um, slash homework. So do we also have to have a separate assignment post that communicates that assignment? Yes. If it's something that is due to be handed in. Yes. What if it's a reading assignment? Then you don't need a separate. We don't need to post it separately. This reading due this day. That's right. Okay. That's right. Does everyone hear the difference in those two? I think that's a, that's a good point to make sure. If it is a reading, a listen to something, um, a watch something that doesn't have a follow up where you need evidence that they did it, understood it but you're just sort of putting it out there, then you do not have to create a separate calendar event or assignment. Okay. If it's one of your three of the week where you do need that, please create a separate event assignment calendar post. Okay, excellent. Jeannie. Ann. This may be not a question for today. Is there any word on AP? Um, there is not a definitive word, but there has been an email Kathy received that gave the possibility for extensions and that. Jesse, you might have more info on that. Yeah, so I, I'll just, I'll just talk. There's a big push uh, right now to cancel all SATs, all ACTs. They're going on, I don't know if y'all know, but College Board didn't actually cancel this past weekend's test. And they're getting a lot of flack online for that. Um, so I know there's also a big push to also cancel all APs as well in any kind of major testing. So more on that soon from College Board whenever they develop the backbone and make a decision. Um, but right now, uh, I think the AP test is still scheduled. Thank you for that that you know. All right. Um, many uh, in, among our community contributed to the document last week where they posed questions. We have culled that with sort of the, the um, most popular questions and have added it to this document that you have. I've spoken to the books situation and again I appreciate any extra work that you feel like you have to do to make sure students have materials if that means scanning pages or um, or otherwise um, if a student is sick they are going to be asked to abide by the same policy as always their parent needs to email Miss Reagan to let the school you know make us aware of that and then we'll figure out communicating that with you if she does the weekly the daily attendance the way she always does or if it's just a list that shared these students have reported as ill thank you for following up with them on makeup work and when those things are due okay so right now we're still operating with if students are ill, do what you usually do in supporting them once they are well and are back to doing work. If you are sick, please email your department chair just as you normally would. Um, it's still 
up in the air as to virtual subs, I suppose. But your department chair will be able to connect. If, you, if you're teaching a class that there are other similar preps for, if it's a common class, then perhaps we could share that material that a colleague has already done with your students. We'll cross that as we need. Um, but please let us know if you are sick um, and don't feel the sense of needing to get your lessons by nine if you are not well enough to do that. Just let us know. And then we'll take it from there to support your students in letting them know that. Technical issues that our students have, we are asking them to email their grade level counselor again as a um, as just a way to keep this database of, of how everyone is doing. Again, I've mentioned we aren't sure of the overload in household um, internet, so we're just going to again lead um, with that grace and understanding, um, expecting the best of them in terms of um, they are sincere in that they aren't connected, um, and then trying to get them what they need to be connected. I know IT is looking at personal hotspots that students can take home and all of these other creative solutions if it is a real um, problem for them to have um, connectivity. And then finally, some of the, the who knows questions. How long will this last? Um, again, we can count on two weeks and we can count tomorrow on um, living into this is how we are operating and we're going to give it our best. If things change in a few weeks, um, we'll communicate that. Um, meaning if they change with the idea that we are not expecting to return, that'll help us to modify assessments and um, final grades, things like that are still up in the air, haven't made a decision about term four grade and all of that. Some of you have incompletes from students from term three. Um, if those students are well, they will be asked to come to campus to complete tests and things like that. So again, we are going to work with them. We aren't going to say they have to do that tomorrow. Um, but please make sure that any tests um, final exams, I guess you wouldn't have a final exam, but any, um, any tests or assignments that students have not completed that are the reason for their term three grade being incomplete, please make sure those are in the learning center so that if students do report to campus to finish that work, they have what they need. How will that be communicated to the student? By the grade level counselor. Yes, hopefully already those students with incompletes, the grade level counselor has a Google um, doc that shows this is the work that needs to be made up, these are the due dates for that. And then with um, Dr. Edwards in the Learning Center and with others with the Dean's Office, we're facilitating proctors for those students that are coming in to make up that work. I think that's a wonderful idea. I'm going to try to do the same thing. And I'm going to invite, encourage. Again, I can't penalize those that don't show up, but um, if some energy grows in the continuation of the learning and the being together as a class, even especially now, right? We have been, if you have a, a year-long class, you have a community that you've built with those learners where I'm hopeful that they're going to miss each other as much as I'm going to miss them. So hosting those 
discussions. I mentioned to my class on Thursday when we did a trial Zoom classroom meeting that we're going to have Harkness discussions like this. We just won't have a circle necessarily. Um, and they were like, yeah, look, we can see each other. This is so cool. Um, let's try it. Okay. Let's invite, and we won't get our feelings hurt if they don't show up, but those that do, um, we are going to pour into them with, um, with the same energy that we give um, to every period if we were here in this building. So feel free to offer that and facilitate it, and we'll see what happens. We want, in closing, um, Just a couple, a couple things in closing. Um, um, John Paul Sartre famously said, <laughs> "L'enfer, c'est les autres." <laughs> and some of you might be feeling that sense of. Um, separation from students and colleagues as maybe a nice continuation of spring break that didn't feel long enough. And that's a very fair assessment. Um, I've recently, as the, you know, the um, many have been thinking of a novel I read several years ago, Station Eleven, um, by Emily, I don't know if it's St. John or St. John Mandel, um, that it's, it's that, does art mirror, does art mirror um, reality, does reality mirror art, right? But this novel writes about a flu pandemic um, and how everyone is now quarantined and how um, we are now separated. And she flips this idea of Sartre um, to say, Hell is the absence of the people that you long for. And I think these next weeks we are going to be, maybe not at first, which is very human and very understandable, but we are teachers because we desire to engage teenagers and students and to collaborate with colleagues. And so we are trying to understand how to continue to do that. Um, and to, again, live during this time instead of postponing our living for whenever a decision is made. Whatever has been decided for this week, we're living into it. Um, here's another quote from this novel. Um, let us not spend our lives waiting, right? But let's live now. In the novel, there's this band called um, the Traveling Symphony that continues to practice Shakespeare as well as other um, acts of art and humanity, even if they don't have an audience. And that's where we, as the band, goes on, right? We continue to invest Another quote from the novel. What's the point of doing all this work? Our students aren't even going to show up. Well, maybe not. But isn't that how we have chosen to live our lives? If we were to stop, what would that do to our souls as teachers? Um, so let's continue. It makes us happy. It gives us peace. It gives me calm to record myself reading a poem, even if my students maybe don't want to. <laughs> um, and to invite them in to, right? Tomorrow, let's all meet at 10 AM and read our favorite poem, or play our favorite song, or whatever it might be that we feel continues to connect us. All right. Thank you for being here online um, in this LJ. Um, other questions that are unanswered by this morning, please feel free to pose them right now or after. Um, we still have five minutes before our Zoom training. If you need to get coffee, um, please do.
thank you all. I appreciate you all. I'm grateful that um, we're doing this together. <laughs> Okay. Um, English, world language, if you just want to stay here, if you just want to stay here, I think there might be a revision to that schedule instead of moving you to 132. You said there was an email that was sent. John C. Hyatt, English is here. Okay. Hold on. Let's just discuss what Jane Green was doing. Got it. Thank you very much. I was hoping it was clear. Ryan gave me the idea that was great. Hi. No, we're both leaving. We don't want to talk to I said, 